Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another AutoCAD, Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, today we'll be presenting another third dimension series uh, presentation. Uh, we'll be discussing 2D and 3D workflows in AutoCAD 2017. Uh, Martin Stewart will be our uh, main presenter here. I'm Victoria Studley and will be moderated uh, in the live help section by uh, Noman Misorawala. Uh, one moment. Um, hey Martin, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, you heard all of that. And you're not on Wi-Fi, right? You're hardwired? I am hardwired and all right, as long okay. as you can hear me, I'm getting a weird message saying that my audio is a little weird. All right. Uh, we're good. Cool, we'll keep going. Okay, so Martin Stewart is one of our Autodesk Technical Support Specialists out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. I am also a Technical Support Specialist based out of our Manchester, New Hampshire office. And Nomam Misarawala is one of our Autodesk Expert Elites. You might recognize him from the forums. He's always in there helping people out. And uh, he's from Westchester, Ohio. So before we get started... For some reason, we're not seeing your slides advance. Maybe that hmm. was the message. We're still on the title slide. You are? Okay. How about now? Mm, still the title slide. Sorry, folks, little technical difficulties. Hopefully we'll get it ironed out here in just a minute. Okay, that's right. I'm going to keep on talking uh, while we figure out what's going on with the PowerPoint slide. Martin, if you could get yours uh, up and running, that would be wonderful. Um, you've seen this all before, though. The uh, Feel free to put questions in the chat window. Um, we'll answer those questions as time allows. Uh, the session will be recorded and put up on YouTube uh, on our Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist. And the links are available in your registration reminder in the post-webinar survey, and uh, Nomam will post those in the chat window as well. Uh, you can download the slide deck and the um, data set after the webinar uh, at, via those links. So I have it up if you want to switch the video to me. Sure. Are you still not able to see mine? Right. It, okay. Nomam, you can't see hers either, right? Okay, do you have it, Martin? I'll take it. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Is this where you left off? Welcome to the Autodesk Help webinar series. I'm still waiting for it. Uh, yes, okay. Yes, it is. All right, okay. so uh, the next couple of sessions in our um, Build Your AutoCAD IQ series are tips, productivity tips and tricks, um, an introduction to 2D modification tools in AutoCAD 2017, um, working, uh, this one should actually be working with dynamic blocks on May 5th, and uh, then we'll be back again on May 12th for turning on the lights um, working with lighting in AutoCAD 3D. And then you you can download this afterwards, but it's got some links to our playlist and the data set, as well as uh, the registration and community pages if you want to either sign up for the uh, webinar series or post your questions in the community forums after the, uh, after the session here. All right, next slide. Uh, these are some resources on our Autodesk Knowledge Network where you can find um, some getting started resources if you're just getting started in the program, some downloads if you need the latest hot fixes or service packs, uh, or if you're having trouble um, with the program itself, there are some troubleshooting uh, articles on there as well. You can also find our customer service, installation and licensing, account management, and community links there. So now into the interesting stuff. Um, 
this is an image from uh, the model that Martin will be walking us through today. Uh, he's going to discuss some um, tips and tricks on how to uh, start with a 2D um, design and move it into a 3D model. Um, before we jump into the presentation though, let me run the polls really quickly. So the first thing we would like to know is, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? So for those of you who have joined us before, uh, welcome back. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. And we hope you enjoy it. Leave that open for a couple more seconds here. Okay, and I'll close that poll out. Okay, so that looks like um, most of you have been with us before. So welcome back. All right. So the next thing we would like to know is which AutoCAD-based application do you use? Are you working in AutoCAD? Are you working in AutoCAD LT? Uh, if you are working in AutoCAD LT today, um, you won't be able to use the 3D tools, but you can open a 3D model in there and um, do some basic navigation around it. Um, maybe you're interested in trying uh, AutoCAD uh, 3D modeling, in which case this might be aimed at you. Um, if you're working in one of our vertical softwares, uh, the 3D tools are available there as well. Architecture, MEP, electrical, mechanical, plant, civil, or map. All right, so we'll close this one out and show you those results. It looks like most of you are working in AutoCAD or a, an AutoCAD vertical, with about 21% of you in AutoCAD LT. Let's hide that. And here's the third one before we get into the presentation. Do you use 3D modeling or editing tools in AutoCAD? So tell us, have you, uh, have you used this before or uh, is this your first time uh, giving it a go? We'll leave that open for a few more seconds for those of you who haven't answered yet. All right, looks like we have a lot of first-time 3D users, but also uh, a lot of people who have dabbled in it a little bit. We have, uh, as usual, a few pros in the audience as well. Cool. All right, Martin, uh, let's turn it over to you. Thank you, Victoria. So welcome, everyone, to our Third Dimension uh, series. This is actually a continuation of our March webinar where Victoria went through the solid editing tips and tricks and showed a lot of the various uh, 3D modeling solid tools. So what we're going to do is go through a workflow that demonstrates several of those tools, but also takes advantage of any 2D drawings that you may have that you want to build a 3D model from. So we are going to use an architectural example, but this could certainly apply to a lot of other industries. This could be applicable to interior designers or engineers working with interiors or, or buildings. Also, you could easily see how this could be applied to like set design or exhibits, and certainly uh, product design, furniture design as well. So. A lot of you are transitioning from 2D to 3D modeling, but 2D drawings, of course, can still play a very uh, important role in this, and you may even have a lot of existing drawings or receive 2D drawings that you really want to be able to see in 3D to study it. There's a lot of uh, value in modeling it. Uh, you might even discover uh, conflicts or issues with the intended design as you start to see it in, in three dim dimensions and perhaps have missed areas that were difficult to visualize in 2D. So we're going to step through this uh, starting with a floor plan. So in this example we have a, a simple room, it could be an exhibit, uh, we have walls, windows, a fireplace, a bed, columns, we even have in dashed lines the reflect ceiling plan. So you may have created this 2D drawing like this or received it from someone else. Uh, the first step 
especially if you received it from an outside st source, would be to really go through it and clean it up to prepare the drawing for use in a 3D model. And perhaps even before that, you want to be working on a copy. So you have, especially if you have several 2D references, have those in a, in a backup directory so that you can always refer back to them as you progress through your project and make alterations to these 2D drawings. So we're in a floor plan. So the first thing to do would be to uh, delete anything that's not needed in your 3D. Um, this is a very simplified and clean example already, but I'm just going to delete this text. I know I don't need that in there. And I want to make sure I take out the whole uh, layer as well. So I could just use the layer delete feature, which not only deletes the object, but allows me to go ahead and delete the entire layer. Um, I would run a purge, do a purge all. You can audit the drawing. But another important thing to check is to be aware of what your UCS is, your user coordinate system. The default is WCS or, or world coordinate system, and that's uh, ideally what you want to be in for this type of workflow. I've also turned on the UCS icon. If yours is off, the command is UCS icon and make sure that's turned on there. And I placed it dead center of the model. So I've got the plan ready to go. Looks like I didn't complete my previous uh, delete command. I'll go ahead and do that now. So at this point I could start a brand new drawing using the 3D template and then insert the plan or I could do a save as or I could just work right out of this drawing. Uh, I would probably recommend starting a new drawing especially if you've uh, inherited these drawings from a source that uh, you're not familiar with. I'm going to go ahead and insert. Notice I'm in a drafting annotation workspace currently and I'm going to go grab the elevations. So elevations are another um, important me. I'm getting an error message here. Give me just a moment. I think I have an off-screen uh, window. Let me check for that. I'm going to need just a moment. Sorry for the delay. That's all right, Martin. This happens from time to time. All these uh, awkward moments. Hmm. Can you uh, escape out of the dialog box there? Nope, I think I'm froze up. All right. Oh, there we go. There, it came back to me. Let me try that again. I'll be brave and type in insert one more time. I'm going to go browse now, and that's where it's uh, grinding down on me. So... Is it on your That's other? Right. Is it on your secondary screen there? Hmm. It's not popping up, but that might be the um, off off screen window. Let me just minimize this a little bit. Make sure it's not hiding behind the screen when I do it. So let's try that again. It's going to look a little smaller on your screen. Insert. In a browse, and I think it has to do with the GoToWebinar interface is interfering with that screen. So I'm going to cancel this, and I'm going to open a different drawing where I've already done this, and we'll just talk on that so we don't waste too much time here. So here's a drawing where I've pulled in the elevations, and then I've actually taken each one of those elevations and grouped them. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to first ungroup it. So now we have all the individual elements of that elevation. So this originally started out like you see typically a sheet of elevations all stacked up. I've broken them out individually and made them into groups by selecting everything, right clicking, and grouping. And that just makes it a little easier to organize. The other thing I've done is, in preparation of using this for our 3D model, 
is taken construction lines, and I'll just delete this one so I can demonstrate it. I'm still in drafting an annotation. I could do this in the 3D workspace just, workspace just as easily. But then I'm going to draw a construction line. And I can just make sure I hit at the end of that wall and go on the right axis. And that creates that infinite line. So a key in setting up your 2D drawings for, for 3D use is to align the elevations around the plan and then offset them at an equal distance and an easy to remember distance. And you'll see why that's helpful shortly. But I've set all these off at 50 feet. And then I've rotated them to a line. So I have a front and interior back view, side views, sections. So this is applicable to a lot of situations where you have completed floor plans, sections, and elevations. Get them aligned like this. Grouping each elevation and even the plan helps it uh, be a little more manageable. So the next step is to do some tilt up. We want to tilt this plan up so that it's in uh, the other z-axis so that we can reference it while we're doing the 3D modeling. So at this point, and let me expand my screen, sorry about that. At this point, let's go to 3D modeling workspace. And to rotate this, we're going to use in the Home tab the selection panel a rotate gizmo. And we'll select this group and we'll go into a 3D mode over here at the view cube. I'm just going to hit the corner view there. And there's our rotate gizmo. This is at zero Z elevation as I've inserted all of these at zero so far. If I were to rotate this now, it's going to rotate it in the middle of that elevation, which is not what I want. So the first step with the rotate gizmo in place is to pick on that point, right click, and relocate the gizmo. And I'm going to put it right on this corner. Then we're ready to rotate it. Make sure we get the correct access, axis. I want to rotate it on the Y axis and stand it up. So it's just like tilt up construction. We've stood up that view. And so we'll just go around with the rotate gizmo, relocate it to the corner, and do a tilt up. So rather than going through all those steps, I do have another drawing that I can bring up where we've already done that. Let me just grab that one real quick. So these are already aligned and tilted up. So we have this, have them in the right uh, Z coordinate. I'm going to go, I would go ahead at this point. We've verified that everything's aligned in the previous step. I'm going to go ahead and delete these construction reference lines. So now I'm ready to start modeling, taking advantage of these 2D drawings. So perhaps the first thing to do before you start your 3D modeling, of course, save your drawing, but give yourself some unique layers to model on. So I'm going to go to my layer properties and create a new layer and let's call it 3D wall to start with. And I'll give that a a bright color so that it's easy to see on the screen. Perhaps we'll start with uh, green. So we're going to double click on 3D wall to make sure that's current. And then we'll go ahead and minimize that and we'll dock it to the side, get it out of our way. So our current layer is 3D wall. So now we want to start building our walls. How do we do that? One thing is I know that this open line at the end is probably not a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and close that. 
And to start building our walls, let's introduce a command called boundary. I can type it in or I can select it off of the draw menu. I'll show you where that is. Let me cancel that. We're in 3D modeling workspace, home tab, home ribbon rather, draw panel, and then the boundary icon is right there. That gives you this pop-up dialog and I want to use island detection and I'm looking for a polyline. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to pick in here and notice how it detects that. So I'm going to make that a boundary. That is on the 3D wall layer but doesn't look 3D yet, does it? We need to then use a command of extrude or press pull. Let's go ahead and try the press pull. Uh, Victoria introduced us to that at the previous webinar. And I'm going to hover over that boundary, select it, and it pops right up. So how tall do I want it to be? This is where the preparation work we did previously comes in handy. We can just reach over to one of our elevations and select a point. So I'm going to go over to this elevation. I know that that wall terminates right there. So as, it's, as press pull is working, it knows I'm wanting to go in the Z direction. So selecting over here is just like a filter. It tells it I want to stop right there. And so we've extruded our first 3D wall. I could use press pull again to pick this other boundary that we made. And now I can just, I know this is in the right height, I can just pick anywhere along this wall that I like. Another thing I should mention is uh, sometimes using this method, and let me demonstrate it over here again. I'm going to use boundary command again, I'll type it in this time. I'll pick this area. I'm a little nervous that this line isn't highlighting and others are. So that maybe means I still have an open end here. I'm going to stretch that to see if that helps. Oh, oh, and I think what it also means is when you use boundary command, everything needs to be visible on the screen. And notice that I'm running off the screen here. So that's probably the issue. So I just need to scroll out a little bit and then reinvoke the boundary command. Now when I pick it, it should work fine. So what I wanted to point out is we now have a, a polyline that we've drawn on the 3D wall layer using the boundary command. But sometimes when you try to select, it'll highlight the 2D reference. This um, has to do with selection cycling, and that's a long word for a variable, but selection cycling should probably be turned on when we're doing this work. So I'm going to start typing that in, selection cycling, and I have it set to 1. Negative 1 would mean it's off. Um, so I do have it turned on. I would recommend you turn it on with um, setting it to one selection cycling. Once you have that set, you can use control W to toggle it on and off. And you see that message coming on there. So let's just do another quick extrude. Let's try extrude this time. So this is a good uh, demonstration of selection cycling. It's not picking the right thing. But because I have it on, Selection cycling is set to on or one. I use shift space bar and then it cycles to the proper selection. Then I extrude that and I can use my pick point here that I've already established for a height. So that's how we would extrude the walls very quickly. Using taking advantage of this plan to do our boundaries and the elevations to get our heights. And with some of these elements, you'll be picking different heights. You'll notice in the section view that there's a stepped ceiling. So some walls would go terminate at one height, and other walls, like here, would terminate at another height. So instead of taking the time to go through every single wall, 
again, I have another drawing where we've already um, extruded all these walls. Let me jump over to that one. So here I've gone through and extruded all the walls and I've left a couple examples for us to start talking about punched openings and windows. So I have two choices when creating a window. You'll remember in our elevation we have these large arched windows. We also have these rectangular openings that are shown here. So I want to show you a trick with push-pull first. And again, I'm using uh, dynamic orbit by holding my shift key down and the middle mouse button. But a great trick with push-pull is you can get rid of things as easily as you can create things. And what I mean by that is I'm going to highlight this surface and I'm going to push-pull it up to this corner and notice how it eliminates that space. Let me erase this reference here. So that's something to keep in mind. Push-pull is great for that. But I did that because I wanted to quickly demonstrate how I put that uh, uh, header in there. So you could have elevated these walls individually. Now you're stuck with how do you get a header in here? Uh, this one's a little easier because it's a rectangular opening as opposed to an arched opening. Again, I want to be aware of the layers I'm on. So right now I'm on a layer called 2D Reference. It's probably not where I want to be. I'm going to go set 3D Walls Current again. Make sure I'm in that layer. And my UCS is at World Coordinate System. That's good. So how can I quickly get this header? You simply draw a rectangle. And then you can extrude it. I'll select it and extrude it. I'm going to give it a height of two feet because I know that's the height I need. So sometimes it's quicker just to directly uh, put in the, the height reference rather than snapping off of the elevations. So that looks more like a sill than a header, but of course we can easily move it. So I invoke the move command with M, select it, hit a pick point and a pick point, and there's my sill. Looks like I didn't quite get the height right. Do I have to start over? No, I can just do the 3D orbit, get a good view of that surface, use my press pull again, select it, and bring it down a foot or more. But notice it's got three elements now. If I hover over this, there's three elements here. We remember the command from the previous webinar to union solid objects. So with union, I can pick this and pick the new header, and it merges it all together. So I'll hit return, and now it's all one 3D element. So that was just a quick demonstration of using a press pull to eliminate things, and then creating a header by simply doing it an extrude or a push-pull, moving it into place, and then using union. We would need to do the same here. Uh, we could do that by actually drawing a polyline here. We'd have to set the UCS, draw the polyline here, extrude or push-pull, and then move into place. And that would work exactly like we did it here. But another method is to build out the full wall, and then punch a hole in it. So let's do that. I'm going to use this as my hole punching starting point, and I know that this 2D elevation that we've tilted up perfectly aligns where I need that uh, window opening. So I'm going to set my UCS. That's important. I need to work in a UCS that is aligned with this elevation view. So I simply am typing in UCS and setting the uh, endpoint or origin point there, snapping the desired x-axis, and then the y-axis. 
Remember I said earlier you might want to turn on your UCS icon is the command. It's off in this drawing, so that's confusing. So I'll turn it on. You'll see it over here. And it, I'm going to do that UCS placement again with the command on this time. So I'll set the origin there, select my x-axis and my y-axis. So now I've got the UCS how I need it. To create uh, that opening, I need to make a 3D surface here. I could do it a couple ways. I could draw a polyline on top of this uh, reference, but I'm going to take a shortcut and just use this uh, elevation geometry because I'm, I know I'm not going to need it for anything else in this drawing. So my first step is to select it and then ungroup it. And now I can use regular drafting commands of uh, trimming lines. I'm going to trim that line out. I'm going to trim that line out. I'm going to use pedit to join all these lines on the perimeter of the window. So now I have a complete uh, polyline. I'm in the right UCS. Uh, this gizmo is a little annoying. I don't need it anymore, so I'm going to say no gizmo, shut it off, and I think to get rid of it I actually need to set a different um, visual style to trigger that. We regen. It's kind of um, stubborn sometimes. Okay, I'm going to ignore that for now. And I'm going to use my extrude command. I've got a polyline. Extrude simply takes that polyline and immediately creates a 3D object. And now I can just zoom out. Again, uh, dynamic orbit can be helpful. Shift, middle of mouse wheel. And I'm just going to exaggerate this. Um, I'm going to throw it all the way to here. Or actually, let me undo that. That's probably not safe. I'm going to extrude again. I hit undo to go back to this point. I just want to go just past that wall. Now I use the subtract command. I select what I want to subtract from and then hit return or enter and then I select what I want to subtract. So when I pick that it will eliminate this object and leave a hole here. The reason I didn't want to extend this all the way through is because I know this is one unioned object, so if I'd punched this all the way through here, I would have left a big gaping hole over here, which wouldn't have been any good. So now when I pick it, let me try that again. Select the object. I think I'm not doing the sequence right. Give me one more shot here. I'm going to subtract it, select the object, and then I need to return. And there we go. So that is the subtract uh, of two solids. And so there's a practical, uh, useful method of utilizing those commands. So two methods or more of how to get punched openings in your wall. Uh, that subtract method or building out the opening or the header. So for sake of time, I'm going to jump into another drawing here. We'll close this one, go to another completed drawing with the walls already punched. So we've gone ahead and gone through the time to create all those uh, openings. So the next step in this process is to start building out the details. Uh, I didn't demonstrate the columns yet, but the columns was using the very similar method of creating a boundary of the base and extruding that up a couple inches, creating a boundary of the circle for this a schematic column and extruding that up, and then creating another four inch capital, and then uh, using the union command, the solid union command, to make that all one object. 
you can then turn it into a block and just copy that around. So that's pretty clear on how that's the exact same workflow to create um, columns. Uh, we can also use an, another a nice command that Victoria showed us in the last webinar of selecting a face. So you can do modify, or no, that's over in solid editing, and you can uh, color faces. So once you've done some modeling on the walls, you can uh, pick a face. We need to use our control key when we pick to get a sub-object, and then we can pick a color using color face. Uh, so we've changed the color of just that face on the wall like we did here. So what I'd like to take a few minutes to show is how do you get the window modeled quickly to put in a window? Well, that's where this elevation, again, is super handy. It's already all in this, the alignment that we need. So again, I'm going to go to UCS and set that by clicking the origin point, X, and Y. And again, I can draw on top of this reference, or for sake of time, I can just ungroup it and use that reference. Uh, but I think I want to play it safe and make a copy of this at least. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move it back and even 50 feet. Then I'm going to select this and ungroup it. So now I'm going to use that. Um, actually, why don't I just erase this line and this line. and my 2D elevation already had this as a polyline. If it wasn't an enclosed polyline, I could easily make that with just my regular drafting uh, commands. And these are polylines too. I'm going to use the region command here. So that's not regen, it's R-E-G-I-O-N. And I'm going to select this, and it instantly creates a 3D object of zero uh, thickness. I want to do that again with these other polylines, and this is where selection cycling is very important so that I'm getting the right element. And so I've now created three more regions. And as I hover over them, you see them highlight. So the reason I did that and I think I'm going to also make a copy of this. And I'll throw that back 100 feet just to make sure it's out of the way. The reason I did that is now I can use the subtract solids, pick the main outside region, return, and then subtract the other ones. Got to hover around to get them just right. So I'm going to use shift, there we go, space bar, pick that one, that one, and that one. And when I hit enter or return, that should punch an opening for us. But I didn't do the selection exactly right, so try, try again. So let's do subtract select that and return. So I just did the one to confirm that was going to work and it's working great now. And there is our exterior frame of the window. I need to give it some thickness. Let's go ahead and do a press pull on that. Or I'm going to try the extrude. And I'm going to extrude that four inches to give that the thickness I want. Because I copied that off to the side here, I can go use those regions again. I don't have to recreate them. I'm going to erase this one. And there's my glass. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 
its own layer called glazing. I just use a change property command. and get that switched over to the glazing layer. So that was 3D-glaze. So now I've got the glazing that I need based of, out of those regions. I can place it on the frame. Notice I've, uh, I'm gonna change back to my world coordinate system just UCS return return and then get a more clear 3D view. So I've got the frame model, the glazing, I could add thickness to it, I could then move it in and then what I'd want to do once I got it all positioned is highlight everything and use that group command. I'm kind of taking a shortcut here for the sake of time but that then groups the window and then simply move it into place with the snap I picked the wrong end, so I need to move it twice. And then you can copy that around and rotate it into position. But I do have a completed drawing for that, so let me show you the results of that work, or that workflow. So here's a completed version where that has been modeled, made into a group, and then copied around and rotated. Because we have everything in the UCS and very uniformly laid out, the rotation was very easy in the world coordinate system. The next thing we can do is take a similar approach of building out the ceiling. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is as you start building out the model, it starts to get busy. You can always make copies off to the side to work. You don't have to work right here. You can take this model, or sorry, take this 2D floor plan reference and move it out and work here, for example. Put, build out the ceiling here and then move it back into place. So for the sake of time, let's jump to another drawing where we've already done that. Uh, but that would be a very similar workflow, um, but you have to think about uh, the sequence here. Because it's a stepped ceiling with several soffits, you have to think in terms of what's the best sequence of building this in steps. So you could do a boundary of the whole thing and elevate that, and then a boundary of this soffit and elevate that, and then union them all together. Let's go ahead and jump to the other drawing to better visualize that. So in this drawing, the ceiling has been completed. Uh, kind of hard to look at here. It's just the solid top. But because we haven't put the floor in yet, or a floor slab, we got a couple options here. We could just use our dynamic orbit, which again is shift in the middle wheel, and take a worm's eye view here and look up at the ceiling. So we still have the 2D plan reference here. It doesn't get in the way too bad. Um, but we can see the ceiling beyond and how that's been stepped up and then moved into position. Uh, we also use a very similar workflow to do the lighting. So I could turn off these layers, so I could go and freeze the ceiling and just see these can lights floating in space. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at that. So these were just simply an extruded circle, right? Uh, you could do two circles, extrude them, and then subtract the inner circle from the outer circle. And then you have a simple can light. In a future webinar, we'll show you how to take this object and make that a source for lighting in a model and in rendering. Let's get back to 
a normal view. I'm going to click back up here on my view cube. I'm going to use uh, dash la command and I'm going to thaw t and use an asterisk for everything. And that brings the ceiling back. Another option to not forget when you're doing this modeling is you, we've used uh, dedicated 3D layers throughout and we've been organized about it. So we put the ceiling on 3D ceiling layer. We put the lighting on 3D can lighting. So don't forget that your layers can have a transparency. So let's try setting the transparency of the ceiling, maybe try 60 or so. And now all of a sudden you can see through the ceiling. Uh, we did a similar trick with the glazing and set the glazing transparency at 80 so we can actually see through the window. So once you've done this kind of modeling or got the model to this point, um, if you feel confident you don't need these references anymore, you could erase those out. Maybe one of your uh, later steps is to add the floor slab. That would be very easy, doing a perimeter polyline and then doing an extrude down the thickness of the floor. Let's jump to another model. I'm going to close this one out. And let's go to the final model. See if I can find that real quickly. So here's like a final version where we've, I'm going to minimize that, where we've done some more cool things with it. I'm going to, actually let me step back to the previous drawing real quick. One thing I've done in this model and this is from a previous webinar, is saved a view, let me bring you, bring that screen on here, called bed view. I'm going to set that current and apply it. So this is like what it would be viewed as from the bed. And we've got these placeholder columns. Uh, it's a pretty wide angle, so it looks a little bit distorted. But we can start doing some uh, fun things with this. Uh, perhaps we want to look at what these columns would look like a little bit more refined. So I'm going to freeze this layer. I'm going to attempt to freeze this these columns. And I have an X reference that I have prepared. Let me bring up my X reference dialog. where I have a different set of columns. I'm going to reload this X reference. And because I use the same coordinate system, the same insertion point, it was very easy to lay those out. I'm zooming on my mouse wheel accidentally. And instantly bring those in. In fact, I'm going to make sure I go back to that view position. So I'm going to type in view and grab that bed view again and set that current and hit OK. Now the views save layer states too, so I shouldn't have hit my, my mouse wheel, but I'm going to try that again real quick. Freeze that and then that already has the X reference in the background. I could do the same with uh, the bed. I have a, a, a bed already X referenced in that I can reload as soon as it catches up to me. Let me escape. Highlight that and reload. And you see the custom bed pop in. So 3D models like this could be used for those kind of design studies. Maybe you want to show some options to the owner or your boss. Uh, that's a quick way to do some different studies and save those views. Let's return to the final drawing here. I'm going to hit close this one out. So this is actually a block that I downloaded off the internet, went out and to a site like Autodesk Seek or just Google it for the many other uh, libraries of AutoCAD 3D drawings and blocks that are available 
and brought in this bed to try that out. So this ends up being excellent for a presentation, um, for design studies, and of course you can use this model in other, other applications like 3ds Max and get a lot more uses out of your 3D model. So hopefully that was a, a quick and, and effective workflow using 2D plans and elevations along with many of the 3D solid editing tools that Victoria demonstrated at our last webinar. So Victoria, I'm going to turn the audio back over to you. Sure, sounds good. That was fantastic, Martin. Thank you for the awesome presentation. I always love it when you swap in the, uh, the blocks at the, uh, at the last minute, swap out those X references and have the really fancy columns and I think that's really it's useful. A pretty dramatic presentation tool, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to um, take over the. Uh, I'm going to take over the um, presentation here in a second. Oh, just a moment. Here we go. Okay. Just let me know when you can see my screen again. Yep. All right. Fantastic. So here are some additional resources for uh, 3D modeling in AutoCAD. To, um, if you want to follow up with some of the tips and tricks that Martin shared with you today. Um, as always, if you have questions, you can always email us at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, actually, let me step back there a second. Um, there are some interesting uh, screencasts and uh, videos here as well, if you're more of a video tutorial kind of person. I know I always find those a little more useful than um, written out directions. So, uh, so yeah, there's um, this is where you can leave us feedback. There's that tiny URL. If you want to screenshot it now, you can, but you'll also receive a link in your webinar reminder email. Um, or you can email us directly, autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Just make sure that you put in build your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line because we do have this series going on for several different products. Uh, this way you'll make sure that you get to the AutoCAD team. Right, and then we have a couple of minutes for Q&A, so if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the question uh, panel now, and we'll be happy to answer them. And did we have a final poll or not this week? Oh, we do. That's right. I always forget that last poll. All right, I will, uh, I'll run that now while you guys pop your questions into the, the chat window there, if you have any. Let's see. So, of course, we'd like to know if you learned anything new today. So did we teach you something? Did you uh, did you learn a cool new trick or tip from Martin? All right. I'll leave that out there for a few more seconds. If you haven't voted, go ahead and vote now before we close it down. Did you learn anything new today? Okay, perfect. I'm going to close that out now, and I'll share the results with you. Looks like 97% said, yes, we learned something new, and 3% said, nope, not this time. So hopefully we'll get you guys next time. Uh, if you have questions that didn't get answered, you can either pop them into the chat window, or we can uh, answer them afterwards if you want to email us or uh, engage us in the forums. And now we'll turn it over to Q&A. We've got about six minutes left, so let's see. Uh, Martin, if you want to take control of the hey, screen again. Yeah, hi, Norman. Hey, Victoria. Hey. Hey, how are you? Uh, uh, a couple questions. Uh, somebody had asked about the network and licensing. Um, there are certain webinars uh, that is presented specifically on network licensing uh, and related to that and how to do installations and stuff. Um, I posted the link uh, as an answer to them. Uh, someone also asked, uh, on push and pull of window, large cutout onto a 45 degree surface. Please show detail of how you did that. Ah, okay. 
Um, so, so first, and, uh, yes, uh, we, we do have um, we have a whole installation and licensing team that um, it presents their own webinars just specifically about installation and licensing in the software. So I encourage you guys to check that out, uh, as Noman said. And then, um, Martin, do you want to take control of the screen there? And you can show the, um, what was it, on push-pull of the window? On the 45-degree surface. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'm yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get the screen back. I'm having a little go-to-meeting moment here. Okay, let me, there... try, let me try and give it to oh. you. Maybe okay. it has to go the other way. Here we go. That's better. Okay. All right. So, can I get the uh, question one more time, Nauman? Uh, yes. It's uh, the person asked on push pull of window large cutout. Yes. Onto the forty five degree surface. Yes. Please show detail of how you did that. Okay. That that opening could be done in two ways. Let me go back to this. I'm using the full model here, so it's a little slow. But let me just try and uh, describe it. I'm not going to have time to demonstrate it. But you need to be in the world coordinate system, and then you can actually change the, let me freeze this. Let me just hide that. So it's the same uh, method that we use, but the trick is that your UCS would need to be at the 45. So I would select this as my start point. That would be my X direction, and this would be my Y. If I turn UCS icon on, you'll see that a little better. And then we would just make, rotate this. Because we're now in the correct UCS, we can just go up here and use the rectangle command and draw a rectangle and then use press pull assuming that this had been a solid wall and you could go through that whole wall and then use the uh, subtract command to get that opening. That would punch the opening all the way through the wall then you would model your header in the elevation view. The elevation view would then need to be moved and aligned so that it's in that direction. And then you would model this as a polyline in this UCS, extrude that, and then move it into place and union it. So I know that was kind of a fast review, but we will have this recording posted to YouTube. It's the same exact workflow that we did on this straight wall, but we would have to do it parallel to this 45 and set the UCS so that it aligns with the 45. Excellent. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, I see another um, one there. Uh, uh, one more. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Noah. Oh, okay. No, uh, very quickly, just one more thing. Uh, if, if Martin can just quickly show them the visual style under Realistic, where he was showing them how to transparent the layers, if he can just kind of quickly show the extra view. Yeah, that's a good point. You can also get a, a similar transparent view with X-ray, but that makes everything uh, transparent. So if you just want certain elements transparent, you would use like shaded or realistic, and then set the layers that you worked on to transparent. And that's what I did with the ceiling. So I went to the ceiling and changed the transparency in the layer itself. And you can make that very transparent, like an 80% value, and see how transparent that ceiling is there. It's still on but just the ceiling then is transparent. So you can do a combination of things there uh, using the x-ray visual style or just making the particular layers transparent. And of course you can shut things on and off too to get the views you want. We're at the top of the hour. We are. Um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending and uh, showing up today to attend this uh, 2D to 3D workflow session.
in AutoCAD, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody.